سیدنا اسما رضی اللہ تعالیٰ نما پروفٹ اللہ صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم رپورٹ ٹو سیٹ ڈو نو اسٹاپ صدقہ اینڈ چیریٹی لیسٹ یور سسٹمنسی اسٹاپ اللہ اکبر ڈو نو اسٹاپ صدقہ اینڈ چیریٹی ادر وائز یور سنسٹمنس مے بی اسٹاپ جس تھنک اباؤٹ اٹ دیٹ گوز اگینسٹ آور لاجک دیٹ اف وی گیو دین وی وونٹ ہیو ٹو بائی اینی منی ٹو بائی آر سسٹمس بٹ دی پروفٹ آف اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سین اف یو ڈونٹ گیو دین مے بی یور سسٹمنس ول اسٹاپ Because what you need to have this mentality is that when you spend in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal, you are saved from calamities. For example, you have a certain amount of money in your pocket. You give this money, you give a certain amount of it away. And you look at yourself and you say, I'm minus this much in my pocket now. I had, I had £10 now, I've only got £5. But maybe by you giving that £5 in your way, I stopped that £10 being robbed from you. Maybe you giving that £5 in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal, has stopped you from losing that £10. Maybe that £5 that you've given in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal stopped a member of your family getting ill that you have to spend that money on medicine so that they can recover from that illness. And that's the mindset that we need to have. That whatever we give in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal, it doesn't decrease our wealth. With regards to that hadith that I mentioned before, that do not stop sadaqa and charity lest your sustenance be stopped. Commenting on this hadith, Sayyidina Imam Badruddin Aini, Rahmatullah Ta'ala stated, Do not refrain from giving your wealth in sadqa for fear that it will finish. Allah Azza wa Jal will make you suffer from financial problems or will prevent wealth from you and will deprive you of the means of sustenance. The blessed hadith proves that sadqa increases wealth and is a means of blessing and increasing it. On the other hand, if a person is a miser and does not give sadqa, Allah Azza wa Jal will reduce his wealth and will prevent blessings. And there will be no increase in his wealth. Allah Akbar. My dear viewers of Madhim Shah, we need to get into a habit. Get into a habit of giving sadqa regularly. It is narrated that two pious persons came to Sayyidina Rabia Basri. They came to meet her and they started talking to each other. And they said that if she serves us food this time, it will be something very good. Because we, we will be able to eat halal sustenance here. Because they said, if we eat at her house, whatever the food we get, without doubt, it will be halal sustenance. So at that time, when they went to her, she only had two rotis in her home, which she put in front of them. In the meantime, a beggar came and asked for something to eat. She immediately picked up them two rotis, and she gave them to the beggar. Now these two people, the guests, they were surprised in seeing this. Because now there was nothing for them. Soon a slave girl arrived at her home, holding many rotis, and humbly said to her, My madam has sent these. When Sayyidina Rabia Basri and Mutullah Ta'ala opened the bag and counted the rotis, there were 18 in number. Seeing this, she said to the slave girl, Perhaps you've had some misunderstanding. These rotis have been sent to someone else, Allahu Akbar. But the slave girl said, No, I'm sure that these have been sent to you. However, Sayyidina Rabia Basri Ramatullah has sent them back despite her repeated insistence. So the slave girl kept on saying, no, these are for you, no, these are for you. But she said, no, they're not for me, take them back. After the slave girl returned and told the whole story to her madam, the madam said, add two more roti to them and then take them back. When the slave girl came with 20 rotis, Sayyidina Rabia Basri Ramatullah, she counted them and then she served them to her guests. Allah Akbar. After both of the guests had eaten the food, because they'd seen all this, they'd seen the fact that she had two, she gave them to a beggar, a young girl came with 18 rotis, she refused them, the young girl then went back, she came back with 20 rotis, and now she accepted them. So they said to her, that what asked her about the reason for what she did. So she explained, when you came, I realized that you were hungry. Therefore, I served you with whatever I had in my home. In the meantime, a beggar came and asked for something to eat. So I gave them two rotis and two pieces of bread to them. And I made dua to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And my dua was as such. Oh Allah, you have promised that you give ten in return for one. I have absolute trust in your promise. Allah Akbar. When the slave girl brought 18 rotis, I realized that this was definitely something wrong. And so far, I therefore I sent them back. 
and when she brought 20 rotis, I accepted them, considering them to be a fulfillment of the divine promise. Allahu Akbar, the yaqeen, the iman, the, 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 the solid iman there, that she said that, look, there is a promise that if I give one, I will get 10 in return. So if I get two, I will get 20 in return. And so when these 18 came, she realized that they weren't for her. And she said, when the 20 came, I believe that it was the promise that was made by Allah Azza wa Jalla, and that's why I accepted him. Allah Akbar.